welcome everyone um, and say thank you for joining today's um, business success skills about how to promote your or how to use your home to promote your business. And um, it's been really rewarding to see for us that we have so many repeated, you know, um, um, registrations and, and new people joining us. So um, we really want to keep that going. And uh, we will have next week, just as a little call out, you know, next week we'll, we'll, we will talk about e-design and whether e-design is the new business model to go. And we're going to have on there Andrea Schumacher from Denver. We're going to have uh, Studio McGee on there and Mary Flanagan. So I think this is going to be a really good conversation. Um, and you're all invited. As you know, you're going to get the link, um, you know, via email, or you can also go through my Instagram. And now I mean Instagram bio, uh, where, you know, you can, you can through, through, through that link, uh, you can register. Uh, but coming back to today, I really want to welcome our panelists. And um, I thought we switch it up today and they introduce themselves. Um, you know, we have Pam Pamela Jacarino, the editor in chief of Lux. Um, we have Elizabeth Blitzer, um, um, who is a publicist, and we have James Farmer as an interior designer. And Pamela, do you just want to start, and then we go with Elizabeth, and then James, we let, let the ladies go first. Sure. sure. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure to be here, Benny. Thank you for asking me to join. I'm Pamela Jacarino. I am the editor in chief of Lux Interiors and Design, and I am the founding editor in chief. So I have been at this. It's our 15 year anniversary, and we have regional editions of Lux across the country. Um, our, my team puts out 75 magazines a year, and we love to really, um, our whole thing is to focus on regional design and also what's happening in the design zeitgeist. So it's, it's wonderful to be here. Thank you. Great to have you. Thank you for joining. I'm Elizabeth Blitzer. I have my own boutique uh, PR firm called Blitzer & Company in New York, specializing in um, interior design and home furnishings. And I happen to be a fan of everybody on this panel. So it is um, a great pleasure. We will all sort of work together regularly. And so it's nice to sit here and talk about, um, you know, uh, ideas of the day. So thank you for having us. Awesome. Thank you, Elizabeth, for joining. And then James. Hey, y'all. I'm, I'm James Farmer. I am the principal and founding designer of James Farmer Designs based in my hometown of Perry, Georgia. Um, we, we work all over the South and the Northeast, and we're a traditional design firm, but we also have um, a, a, a wonderful opportunity for speaking engagements, and I'm an author of a few books. So this is a um, is is just an exciting opportunity. Thank thank you for thinking of me, Benny. I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, and before you know, I start with my first icebreaker question. Just a couple of logistics for everybody who is uh, new today. So we're gonna do around thirty minutes, forty minutes. You know, a, a panel discussion, and we've prepared some questions that we thought would be really helpful um, to like get the conversation going and also to share some insights. And then you're very much invited to um, put your questions into. If you hover with your mouse, you know, uh, at the bottom of your window, you see Q and A, and you can click on there and you can enter your question. Try to make it short. But question because I have to in a lot of cases to read and listen and digest so it really helps me if um, if the question is short and we try to get through them all you know um, so but please do um, you know the last 20 minutes we normally dedicate to 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 your questions um, so let's get started and James because you were the last one with the introduction we're going to start with you I would love to just like get an ease into the topic of like how to use your home to promote your business with the question have you done any decorating to your own home in the last few weeks, now that you've spent so much time there? Uh, thank you, Benny. I appreciate the, the question and leading off with that, um, I'm definitely a nester, so I love to be home and in my nest. It has given me that opportunity to get the little things done that make such a huge difference. In particular, um, it was the, the guest room for me. I had um, window treatments put up in the guest room, the um, new new bedding. Um, I've been meaning to do it. In my workroom, I always put the clients ahead. So no, no, you know, go on and get this client done. <laughs> Next thing you know, I'd, I'd forgotten, I'd ordered the bolt of fabric and it's just there. So it was wonderful just to check that off the list and it felt so good, little things like, 
the shower shelf or painting this railing or planting this. I've, I've really been working, working hard at home. Farmdale is, is my home here in Perry. And what's been extremely rewarding in particular is to be able to be home all day through the day and to see the light in different respects. Um, my dining room has become my home office, not just because there's a table and chairs there, but my dining room is really where I would entertain at night. So to see it in the daytime has been, has been so rewarding, but little things like new, new pillows on the sofas, little paint jobs, little things I could do made an extreme, um, just wonderful, refreshing um, time here at home. Thank you, James. Um, uh, Pamela, I kind of secretly hope that you will point out the wall behind you that you did work to because it looks so spectacular. But what did you do to your home or did you do something? Uh, well, I did do this wall. I am sitting in my former art studio, now my work from home space, and it had white walls until I had a lot of nervous energy and I also have a lot of inspiration images and textiles. So I wanted to be surrounded by something that um, I felt was beautiful. And so I put this up um, all within two weeks. And since then, really, it has been a lot about seating <laughs> for me and realizing that uh, some of my chairs are not as comfortable as I thought that they were. So I've been um, thinking about getting new uh, uh, dining chairs and also recovering um, uh, in, it, I have an antique settee that I bought at High Point Market that I love, but I realized the cushion needs some fill in it and a new fabric. So those are sort of um, some of my upcoming projects. Awesome, awesome. Elizabeth, what about you? Well, I haven't had my house for that long, but I, my, I would say what my house has sort of come undone I had just gotten it about a year ago, and so everything was in perfect, you know, as I wanted it to be. And then I'm now in quarantine with my sister, my brother-in-law, <laughs> a five-year-old, and a three-year-old. So all of my good hard work, you know, the, the appliances were perfect. I never cooked with them. Um, everything was just spotless, and now the whole house has come undone. And that's okay, too. I'm, I'm learning to, it's helping me just jump right in there and live in the, the house, so it's very interesting because we are actually discussing internally also whether this is going to be you know one of the new trends that it's just you know that it's actually okay and wanted that houses look lived in yeah and kind of used you know um but we don't speak about trends today so benny get back on track um uh, elizabeth um i would love to hear from you you know how you can exactly use your or you know you use your home to promote your work and business like what as a publicist and i would love to hear you know the perspectives also from you pamela from the magazine world and or publishing world and james from the interior design world how 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 do you think how exactly can you use your home to do that well i think i mean the most important thing about a designer's own home is that it is their best calling card i mean it is the one place where they can marry like their skills with you know personality and personal touches you know i think what commonly happens is you do a project you finish it and you're ready to publish it but you have to photograph it this you know the minute it gets completed before the family moves back in and while that's it is its most perfect state it's also the most impersonal and you know what we find when we are pitching projects to um, magazines national regional local you know whatever the magazine is you know, usually the editors, you know, their prize project is your own home because it really is everything that you want it to be plus personality. Um, and so I feel like it's such a great, for so many reasons, for press, PR, for business development as far as like being, you know, getting new business, you know, having your own home be a reflection of your design strengths and point of view is a real selling point and a calling card and honestly will i think do the most to get new business and promote you know your the firm the company and and the kind of work that you do i mean pam you might you i'm sure you see projects all mm -hmm. the time so i feel like you would um be able to weigh in on this but would you agree yeah how do you think about that but yeah how do you, yeah 
Yeah, I mean, I would, I would underscore what um, Elizabeth has said. And I think, uh, you know, for a designer, we all want to know not only about the work that you do, but, you know, who you are. What, what is, um, what are you all about? And I think I agree with Elizabeth, within your own home, you can bring that forth. And, 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 and you don't also have to, with your own home, present the whole home. You can present your kitchen, you can present, present your powder room and do it in stages or do it all at once. But a lot of designers that we've gotten to know are because they've presented their home and it tells a story and, and editors and I think, I think um, even clients want a narrative. So that's what, um, that's what your own home can give to you. Mm -hmm. James, you know, you've published your home too, you know, like, how did you promote or how did you really use it? How did you go about your own home? Well, the, the old expression of practicing what you preach, um, even the, the cover of my new book uh, is, is Farmdale, my house. And in the South, we are so, in particular, we're so house proud. And it's not that we all live in, you know, grand Southern mansions, it's that we live in homes that we are proud of. And there's that difference between house and home. Home tugs on the emotional side of things and the heartstrings and a house is more of a dwelling. So that said and done, um, I use my house to really show, you know, that that is my great Aunt Irene sideboard behind me or whatever those things are. We have these, these opportunities to present um, what our clients need us to portray for them. Because if, if, if they were excellent designers, they, they wouldn't have, um, have us translate that. So the ultimate result for me is, is, is taking house to home and allowing home to be, you know what, if I, if I really want to go grandma chic in my guest room while I'm a 6'4", you know, big Southern man, I can go grandma chic in my guest room and show that to a client, but I can use the handsome plaids and um, other, other motifs. It's a way you can really blend. I always tell my clients that my house is like the salt on a chocolate chip cookie. It just adds that little touch um, that allows me to give it that, that flavor that um, you may not be able to get on your own. So um, Farmdale and then my, my home up in the mountains, um, both are chapters in my next book. So I um, practice what I preach there. And I think, James, you're making a very interesting point because, I mean, obviously, we're going to talk mostly about, you know, shooting your home and like how that all works. But you also just added the offline component. You know, you can entertain in your home. You can get clients, you know, you can invite clients home. I think there is, you know, the whole like how you live um, component to that, too. Very interesting. Um, you know, I, I would. I would love to, you know, before we now dive into, you know, all the different steps and how you do it and so on. Like, so what are the different avenues I can take with my pictures? Because I think, you know, it all starts with the goal question, I think. So I would love to ask you, and Pamela, maybe we just start with you, you know, like, how do I find out what goal I have and like which avenue to take for that? Yeah, well, I think it's, it's it, you know, when you think about putting your home out there, it is an interesting exercise to go through, even, even for, you know, what is the message that you want to communicate about who you are as, as a designer, because what you put out there, especially if it's your own home, that that's an important question to ask. And then beyond that, for nuts and bolts, really, it, it you know, I think I think it's so important for design professionals to define what their their goal is. There's a lot of different paths now that you can take. You can choose to get published in a local magazine like Lux, which really we we sort of you know, are about that local design and reaching people in your community. Um, or you might want to, you know, go to one of the national magazines. You might want to start a blog. And that's where you want to control the message. You may want to put your home out on Instagram and tell a story that way. So it, it, really, it really is a matter of what is important, I think, for a magazine um, to be published. It, it can sometimes give you authority if you're a young designer just starting out and wanting to, you know, get that sense of an authority, that might be something that's important to you. Uh, so there's so many different paths and, and taking a minute to think about what they are and what the goals are is, is extremely important as is, you know, what is that, what is it going to look like ultimately when it comes out?
Can, can anybody hear Benny? Yeah, Benny's Benny's a little. Oh, sorry. Okay. I, 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 I'm like used, used from my business meetings that I always mute myself when I don't speak and I, then I always forget to. <laughs> sorry for that. No, I wanted to say that's super interesting, Pamela, because you, you say like, okay, so a magazine could be, could be an avenue if you want to create authority around, you know, who you are and so on. Elizabeth, like, why would you suggest somebody, for example, to go to Instagram or to do an online story or blog? Like, in which case would you do that? So I think that, you know, getting published is a very, it's, um, it's complicated, you know, I think that making these choices, sometimes, you know, they, not everything is always offered up to you. So you have to sort of look at what um, you are working with, and then make decisions that are going to be best for you. And I think, um, to Pamela's point too, um, you have to understand, or maybe we were talking this before, what your goals are in getting published. And I think that, um, you know, finding, you know, positioning yourself to be, um, an authority in the business or to get recognition for work you do. I mean, it can be, you know, when we're in the client services business, all of us are. And when you do that, it can be sort of thankless because, you know, you're getting paid to do your job and you work very, very hard, but it's not like people say to you all the time, like, thank you so much, this is amazing. You know, it's just, it is what you do. And so I think that there is a, a, a place for the idea of just getting some recognition and, and it feels good. And if you work in a business for a very long time, seeing your work out there in the world feels great. Um, you know, I say to people all the time, it's like, you know, the, the prospect of getting um, published in a national magazine just gets smaller and smaller. There are so many more designs in the world, fewer magazines, each magazine has fewer issues than they used to have, and your competition is, you know, some, you know, somebody's second or fourth home that's a palace in the south of France, and they are an internationally known, recognized, famous designer, and it's like sometimes you just, you know, if a magazine is getting that, or, or your project, which is, you know, um, for us in Manhattan, like another Manhattan apartment, or, you know, or, or if you're sitting in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, where I'm from, and, you know, you just have a really beautiful house, then you're, the odds are sort of against you at the get-go, and it's not because you don't have amazing work. So I always say to people, there's that every, I mean, it, it would be, it's in a great goal to have, but I also will say to you, the downside of getting published in a national magazine is you don't always get new business. If you are published in a magazine like Lux that has regional publications, it's very high end, it's very glossy, it is gorgeous, and I'm not just saying it because you're there, but I say this all the time, and you're, the people that are reading it are in your, um, there you are accessible to them because you are in their state, in their region, they will call you and hire you. You know, you will get business. People tell it to us all the time. You get new business when you are published in regional magazines. And Lux is, you know, this is an ad for Lux, but it's the, it's the top of the um, mm. top line <laughs> of that kind of publication. Um, and then I'm, I'm not going to go on and on and on, but there's a whole conversation for um, foregoing, you know, um, print publication for um, online. And I'm sure we'll get there too, so I won't. Um, Take yeah, I would find that very interesting. And maybe James, you have an opinion on that too. In which case would you just, um, you know, take beautiful pictures and, you know, try to get them on a blog or through Instagram? Like in which case would you do that? Any opportunity you have to photograph any project, whether it's your home or a client's, it, take it, take it. Um, for what I've learned in particular um, is not only, as Elizabeth mentioned, our homes are our calling card, but Pamela, I'm sure you can attest too. It's like you see, okay, well, here's another, this style. You know, we see, we see styles, we see things coming in and out. What I try in particular, especially with my home, is that often if an editor or a, a, a magazine uh, writer or someone is reaching out to me, it's because they have they have already uh, sourced and been through so many options and it's just they need something fresh if i can keep my house or a project um what i like to call khakis and a white shirt it just is kind of clean and it's timeless but i can throw a great blazer on and pair loafers with it and shine it up for for lux or let's say that 
you know, this online blogger and she wants, um, she wants to photograph something and I've got, I've got it there in the can. And I said, you know what, I had a great Christmas party and I photographed it. Here it is. So I think it's being malleable enough, um, just neutral enough, but at the same time where if it's, you know, okay, well I just added this, you know, gorgeous chartreuse candles to a silver candelabra and that spiced it up. It gave it that, you know, that opportunity just to shine that much more. Um, our own homes in particular are, are able, are able to do that. Um, I always mm -hmm. respect when, when an editor or a publisher or a magazine writer has come to me and I'm thinking they've, they've been through a lot and seen a lot already. So what can I give them that's that, that fresh palette um, or that palette that's, that's malleable to, to make it into what they want. Can, yeah, I, add, can I add one thing to that? Of course. I think that, um, what's interesting is to how much um, the, um, publishing world has changed or there is so much um, content happening constantly where it used to be like you're either a well story like you're you have a home shoot in the middle you know in the well of the book or sort of nothing else now there are a million things and I always I tell my clients all the time um, my grandmother was a city editor of the Natchez Mississippi newspaper and she used to play a game with my mother called what's a story and they would just drive around they say what you know my mom my grandmother said my mom what's a story and she you know say they're you know they're cows in the they're cows in the lawn and you know my grandmother said that's not a story that's just a fact you know and so the idea to your point of i shot a christmas party like there's a story in everything you do if you are this kind of if you live well and that's what has really evolved i think as far as content goes is how to live well so if you shoot a christmas party and you do a beautiful story for me as a publicist that's like 10 potential stories that's like you know 10 tips for decorating it's like you know it's um your best holiday recipes it's this it's that and if you have photography to go with it you can pitch that out regularly and now you know, raising your SEO on, you know, Google, if I'm using these words correctly, is almost, yeah. it's another piece of the puzzle of promotion, you know? So even if it just seems silly or it doesn't, you know, it doesn't live very long here or there, it's making a difference. It's like eking away at your things like your SEOs, your, you know, raising to the top of the um, Google search. Super interesting, Elizabeth. And I think I think we touched on two very important points. And that is, you know, I think the story and the repurposing also of the same room, maybe in different stages, or like, you know, and Pe Pamela, maybe just like before we start, you know, before I ask I also start asking more concrete questions, maybe Pamela, real quick. I also think there is a hierarchy, you know, like so if I post something on Instagram, I'm probably not gonna get print a publication anymore. So, but um, I can post whatever I want, you know, once I've been published. So how do you, how do you see that, that hierarchy in terms of also repurposing and reusing, you know, your, your, your pictures and maybe adding more uh, narratives to it? That is where things get a little complicated and have, have, have changed because obviously on the magazine side of it, especially if we're going to, sometimes we, we, we will accept photos if it's already been shot and it's shot by a photographer we would have used and we can't go back in, um, we'll, we'll get something that's interesting. And often when we're in a submission meeting, I will ask the editors, have you been on their Instagram or is every shot on an Instagram? Oh boy, that's a little bit of a game changer. So when you, you really, I think with everything, you just have to have a strategy. And, 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 I, would, and I would say to designers, you know, if it's something where it's important, if it's important for you, to try to get published in the magazine. Don't put every shot onto Instagram because it, 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 we, we have a problem. Sometimes, you know, it'll, it's already on their website, in which case we'll say, hey, is it possible for you to take this down until we publish? But it's, it's harder and harder. And of course, um, we, you want the designers to be successful. This is an ecosystem. We don't want things to be so rigid that people can't do what they want. But if, if you're looking to get a big feature in a, in a feature well of a magazine, think twice. Every shot um, goes on Instagram. You may have scouting shots. And if, they're, if you're allowed to represent it, um, that could be an issue. But for some books, it's, it's a deal breaker. Mm -hmm. You make Thank people you. take things down all the time. <laughs> 
I mean, okay, so we've learned a lot of things. You know, we learned that we have a clear goal. We learned that we need to really think about, you know, which channel is actually, you know, good for me and for which purpose, you know, that we need a narrative that we can, you know, repurpose also a room, you know, we can sh shoot the same room like with a, you know, with the Christmas party or like Christmas setup and so on and change the narrative. Um, so let's assume, you know, we have decided that, or I have decided that I want to shoot my house uh, for my own Instagram and for my magazine. And, you know, I would pitch it first to my magazine and then use it on Instagram. Uh, let's become super specific. James, what should I pay most attention to when I take pictures for Instagram or any online use? Like, what would be like your two, three pieces of advice? The first advice I would use is to look at it in the sense that you would look at another designer's work. Um, there's there's a, a famous story out of Atlanta, one of the old great designers, and you just knew that there was going to be the same ivy topiary and the same blue and white cash flow. It was in every shot. And it became <laughs> distracting in a sense because the rooms were gorgeous, but my eye kept seeing the same topiary. Um, those Myrtle to topiaries, they're adorable, but when you see them used and reused, and I understand when you're crunch time and getting a picture, you just need that pop of green. But be conscious of your props, um, especially um, how you or if you do if you do repeat them. Um, second off, the the other point that I would that I would make is think about um, the angle in particular in which in which you're shooting. Um, I I'm tall. I'm I'm so I see things completely different. Um, my lead designer, she's a foot shorter than I am. So we have this ongoing battle of, okay, well, I think that needs to go up six inches and she says it needs to go down. The, the perspective of which you're shooting also, because you, you don't want it to end up looking like a real estate ad where it's just blown out and makes the room look huge. Sometimes it's the, the vignette itself is what tells the story because the whole room is amazing to see with your eyes. And maybe that's something you say for an Instagram story or for a video or something. So I really like to, to think in particular when we're photographing, whether it's for a publication or for one of my books, that how is this room seen? And is it a gorgeous dining room, yet 90% of the time you're sitting there, how's the perspective done? How are the props showing up? And um, just, but also just importantly, keeping it um, evergreen, but at the same time, it has a nod to when it is. I love when, you know, a room, you can definitely tell it's bright and sunny and sure you can get strawberries at, at a farmer's market, but at the same time, it's, it's how they're placed and how they're styled. And if I can do that neutrally and evergreen enough where it just, sure, strawberries look great on a kitchen counter, doesn't necessarily mean that it's May. Um, that way, you know, Elizabeth can then pitch it to Pamela and Pamela can see this kitchen and say, okay, I, I love this, but it doesn't say, welcome to the Strawberry Festival 2020. So it's the neutrality, <laughs> it's the prompts, and it's the perspective in particular that I really try to keep in mind when we're, when we're photographing. S super helpful. I mean, coming to, um, you know, maybe we go through that chain that you just suggested, you know, then you, you discuss it with Elizabeth and Elizabeth, you know, pitches that to Pamela. Elizabeth, what would be your, what would be your like pieces of advice, like super specific of like, what do I need to pay most attention to? Okay. So I would, I would say there are three different purposes for shooting. I've been writing this down. Scouting shots, um, shots that you're photographing to give to a magazine in hopes that they are publishing them. And then um, as far as pickup photography, and then shots that you are going to use for your own purposes like Instagram, um, or social media. Website. Um, yeah. Scouting shots are very specific and you want to get full room shots from standing in the corner of the room and have the complete space photographed as it will be available to the editor on the day they walk in. So do not take a picture of a room that you have not been able to talk to the um, designer, uh, the homeowner about buying art for. They will never use it because they don't, they can't go on the trust that you're gonna choose art that will work for the room and the magazine. Like it has to be photo ready and they have to see the whole space because if you start, if you send vignette shots of a room, then they won't necessarily know or understand that the whole space is shootable. It looks like you're trying to cut out parts that aren't, um, you know, 
photo ready. And again, for a scouting shot, you need to have, you know, the dining room, the living room, master bedroom, kitchen, master bath, you know, I'll let um, Pam speak to that more closely, but a scouting, scouting shot situation is they don't have to be professional shots. They can be iPhone shots that you take yourself, but they have to be a very specific, um, you have to see the whole space so they know it's actually ready. And even then sometimes, this happened to us recently, you've seen the shots, you can tell that they aren't great photos and you might call and say, can I actually go in and see it if it's a space that you might be able to see. Yeah. Okay, secondly, um, shoot pickup photography. If you have one chance to shoot your um, space and you, and you are shooting it with the purposes of later pitching it to a magazine for those magazines that are, will pick up photography, because not all of them will, I would say completely overshoot it. Like take 10 more shots of every room than you think you need, because that allows the editor to, that's, you know, wide shots, vignette shots, that allows an editor to do what their job is, which is edit photos and images and have choices. If you have, you know, if you shoot one or two shots of each room and it doesn't really work, sometimes they can't, sometimes they can't run it because there are not enough horizontal shots or, you know, something weird like that. Um, so if you were doing it, if you were shooting it for the purposes of pitching it to a print magazine, completely overshoot it, have so many outtakes that, you know, you, they can shoot, they can almost have any shot they want. And then if you were shooting for yourself for social media, let's say, and I wanted to add one thing to the conversation about um, publishing, you know, doing, you know, if you have, if, you know, the cobbler's children don't have shoes, like if your house isn't ready, and you have one great room or one great space, that's a perfect time to put it on social media because nobody's gonna publish one room of your house in the well of a magazine. So, you know, if you were gonna take pictures for yourself for social media, again, like a beautiful vignette works really well, I think on social media, as does a big space of a room. But I think as far as like, those are the three reasons for me um, when I'm talking to clients, um, the three needs of photography. Super helpful, thank you. And that was, um, you know, super specific. Um, thank you, Elizabeth. Pamela, you know, so let's assume you get now pictures, you know, um, what are the three most um, common mistakes? What are the three things that you love when you look at pictures? Because I think that's also, you know, to make it like, you know, the 10, the, the 10 mistakes, the 10, you know, success factors yeah, or something like that. Or three. I, look a lot of, I look at a lot of homes, we, we see a lot. At, at Lux, um, I do have sort of a, you know, there there's so many things that are done right. There are things that are done wrong. I would say if you're if you're going to shoot, it is worth invest. If you're if you're gonna go there, it's worth getting. It's an art form. Make sure you you do your research. Get a good photographer if you want the magazine to shoot it. But a couple of things: don't do shooting at daylight and then into the twilight and in the evening all at one time. That is a pet peeve of mine. You know, make sure that it's beautiful, natural light that you're shooting with. Um, over styling is a pet peeve. Uh, you know, you're gonna shoot the dining room when you get every piece of china out. And you know, there's something to be said where wherever you're shooting, if you think you've, you've eliminated, get behind that camera and take one or two other things out. And, and keep it natural and real, even if you're styling, you know, with flowers, you don't have to go to the crazy place. Oftentimes the best stuff that we see is somebody ran outside and clipped something natural from the landscape and, and threw it into to a vase and it, and it looks effortless yet beautiful, but it's an art form. It's, it's I think simplicity is, 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 is hard to achieve. So. Uh, you know, keep it simple, keep it beautiful. I agree 100% with everything Elizabeth said. Make sure you get a full room shot and a few vignettes. Um, show us the main spaces. For us, particularly, particularly at Lux, we also, if there is an exterior, you know, for us, we love the homes where there's an architect, an interior designer, maybe the landscape. So getting us, um, getting those shots in are, are is important as well. Um, super helpful. Um, thank you, Pamela. I mean, if I, you know, if I take those common mistakes and, and those, 
you know, in those success factors, James. So I learned, you know, I should not photograph it myself, you know, if I can, I mean, maybe for an Instagram shot, you know, but like, if you, if you're serious about, I understood, you know, take a photographer. So um, I have two questions for you. What do I have to invest for a photographer? Like, I'm sure that's just like from, you know, like, but like, is it 500 bucks? Is it like 3000 bucks? You know, like, is there a range that you can help us with? And where would you go to find one um, depending on like where you are in the country? A photographer, you definitely get what you pay for. And um, you may have your friend from college who, who can, you know, take a picture. That's one thing. But, you know, I travel across the country photographing projects from Connecticut to Missouri to North Carolina. And, you know, the, when they fly and they have all the bags, you just think, oh, what do they need all of that? They do need all of that. Uh, <laughs> everything from those, from those screens, from those lenses. And so you really get what you pay for in that respect. But look at a designer that you admire. You know, um, there there's so much to be said for there can be, you know, cattiness in this world. We're all in it together. And so if we, you know, see a designer that we love, um, that's great. You know, for my last book, I worked with a new designer. I was very familiar with this work, but I never worked for worked with him. However, one of my best buddies is an is an amazing architect in Atlanta. That that was enough of a recommendation right there that he trusted him. Um, because my, my uh, usual photographer had a, a scheduling conflict. So the payment part of it is that it is expensive, but I think it's on par expense with the caliber of projects that you're working on. Look at what your clients are spending on, you know, on that wallpaper or that fabric or however the furniture is. And then you don't want to just take cheap pictures, you know? So um, I love what, what y'all just said that photography is, is an art form. So you're definitely getting what you pay for. Find a designer who's um, who you respect and can trust and say, how was it working with this photographer? Because you're with them all day on a photo shoot. You're traveling with them. Um, and so when you're, when you're on an airplane with someone uh, flying to Connecticut and back, you get to know them. And that's a huge part of it um, as well. So I'm, I'm real thankful that um, Atlanta is really a great source. And always look at those um, often overlooked but very important bylines. Um, who wrote the article, who photographed the article, and don't hesitate to tap on that picture, see who's tagged, and shoot them a message and say, hey, I'm a designer working on this. What are your fees? What are your rates? Pick up your regional Lux magazine, flip through it, and see who they use. Absolutely. People, seriously. Or a regional magazine. That's a great way to get, if it's good enough for them, they'll be good enough. And just to add one thing to that, um, you should invest in it because that may be the only time that you're ever able to get back into that house. And you may find ten, your 10 year plus self might wanna write a book one day or have a book published. And that may be, and if you haven't gotten really good photography, you know, in that moment, you might, never, you might not ever be able to go back and get it. So it's an investment in your portfolio, in your, it's a, it's a business expense, you know? Yeah. yeah. I underscore that. I would, I would also just add that a photographer, it is an art form. The photographers each have a little bit of a different style. So I, I do agree and do, do your homework. It's a very interesting time right now because we can't shoot all over the country the way we normally do. And when this all happened, what are we looking for and what are we accepting now while we can't shoot the way we do shoot? We're, we're looking at and accepting projects from designers and design professionals who had previously shot their work. So I agree 100% with James and Elizabeth. It's an investment. It's worth making it the investment. Um, do your research, find someone whose work speaks to you and, um, and negotiate. You can negotiate, I mean, make sure you also have the copyright, which is also something important. For us at Lux, we, we, we will also shoot. Um, we don't retain the copyright, so we retain an exclusivity for a period of time and then you can um, buy the shots from the photographer. That's how we, that's how we work. But it is an important investment for you um, to make. Very helpful. Um, also, you know, I think what's so helpful about it too is just to understand, you know, you need to have your full house ready if you want to pitch it to a magazine or to a bigger story, or you can be basically doing piece work and then just use it online and like, you know, or for your website or some, whatever but always do it professionally. I think that's super helpful. I mean, 
you know, two last questions and then maybe we, we start diving into also more of the q and A. I'm wondering, you know, as an interior designer and I've done interior design work myself, you feel like, okay, I know how to make a room pr um, pretty. Do I really need a stylist too? Is it really such a different, uh, for, uh, you know, uh, art for a picture? Uh, number one is, and in, in combination with that, if, if I need it, where else can I save money on a project like that? Like, are there like a couple of tips where you just said like, yes, like here you can take a shortcut or here, here you can cheat. Um, James, what do you think? Uh, thank you, Benny. I love this perspective. Um, as a designer and an author of design books, you know, you sometimes, it's like being a cook, tired of your own cooking. And if a stylist can come in and, it, it, you know, it's like a, a grilled cheese sandwich, Benny, I guarantee you yours tastes better than mine. And so if someone comes in and does that, it just makes all the difference in the world because I have fiddled with putting, you know, this jar with this branch, I've moved it an inch, I've moved it two inches, I've moved it up, I've moved it back. A great designer like Elizabeth and I were just talking about our friend Francis can just walk in and just fresh eye, put it where it needs to go and it's, and it's just genius. I don't do my own plumbing, so all my styling, I, you know, I can, I can fix the drain if I have to. It's just helpful to have someone who's professional who has a better point of view and can really, and what's going to happen, they're going to make you look better than, than you really do because you've set the tone. And then that designer comes in, places that, you know, that poppy in the, in the julep cup and people remember that, remember that shot of that, of that room that the designer did, but there was a stylist behind it. It's just another profession that you really need to invest in for sure. If you can. Mm -hmm. I, I would Elizabeth. add to that though, Sorry, oh, sorry. I, I, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. I would add to that, though. Um, I have worked with some photographers who really have a knack. You know, it, it, first of all, number one, it starts with what are you comfortable with as a designer? I've, some designers we've worked with are amazing at styling and styling their own work, and they have a very specific point of view and their preferences that they style. Um, if you're not there, you can also, some photographers have a really good eye for, for, for detail. So it's something that you should, you, you know, if your budget is tight, you know, talk through with, um, with your photographer because some of them also have very keen eyes for this. Um, but there's amazing stylists who are out there. And I agree with James that they have a knack for making a room just sing and, and, it's something that if your budget permits, um, they can do wonderful things um, to, to make your work just look really elevated. It almost, like, it, it almost like breathes just a touch of oxygen into the space. You know, it just, I think sometimes, you know, designers are always, you know, they have such a vision and it's perfection as it should be. And sometimes what the stylist does is just, it's undoes it a little bit that makes it, feel real and like alive in a way that you know it doesn't take away at all from the design it just it's just like that 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 poof of oxygen or something and what i learned and what i learned at my like very small manhattan apartment when i shot it also that you know you see negative spaces on a photo that you would normally not see yeah. and that's where like where i had a huge aha effect you know where i like oh my God, this looks all so empty. Yeah. And in reality, it looked great. So for that, you know, either, you know, asking the photographer or if you have a budget, you know, the stylist. And I do think also, Pamela, correct me if I'm wrong, or uh, is that, you know, you know, if you look in the Lux magazine or in other magazines, you know, or on Instagram, you see a lot of references to stylists too, yeah. where you can find them. So it's probably, you know, as you find a photographer, that's the way how you can find a stylist too, right? Yeah, they and they also just they see things differently. As you know, we we see things in pages, <laughs> so it's a different it's a different mindset. It, the vision when you're going to shoot is very different. And there's excellent um, stylists across the country that that we work with. So you know, and if you have the luxury sure. of having a magazine come and actually shoot your project, that's what they're doing. I mean, they're really you know you don't need to do that kind of prep if you have again, the luxury of a magazine, yeah. you know, coming in and doing this for you. Because, I mean, honestly, I've been on shoots where you see like an editor who is also the stylist, you know, move a chair just 
this to the left and then, you know, because it's the way they're going to see it on, which I doesn't even, you know, I can't even wrap my head around it even now, you know, um, but it yeah. just, it is a, it's a, vi it's a visual thing. Okay, so the time is like running us away. So we need to switch into the Q&A, uh, to the Q&A part. Um, but I can't, um, you know, stop myself to make also one more comment that, you know, when I went to my first photo shoot, blow my mind, I thought like, oh, you know, you get into a room, the photographer knows how to take a picture, you shoot it, and then you move on. I mean, you know, it takes at least one to two days to do a proper, like for a house, like two days for a Manhattan apartment, a full day. And I didn't know that, you know, and it's like on Instagram, you know, all those like Instagram famous people it always looks like spontaneous photo shoots of themselves. There were probably thousand pictures taken before until they picked the right one. And I think that's just important for all of us to understand that whatever looks effortless, it's like a piano player, right? The more effortless it looks, the more work goes into it. Um, I, I just felt like for me, you know, being new to the industry four or five years ago was a huge aha effect. Um, so I have, we have 22 questions so far. So what I would love to do is I read the question and then, you know, I either, if I think there's, you know, a name attached to it, I call it out or some, what, whoever screams the first, you know, answers the question, then we move on. We'll battle so it out. Okay, perfect. So Michelle Boyd asks if um, focusing resources on designing one space to the max for promotional purposes, what space is the most impactful to potential clients? Is it the bedroom? Is it the living room? Is it a quirky bathroom? What would be your suggestion? I would say the living room is pretty important. Uh, yeah, I, I go for the living room. You know. I defer. I okay, know. cool. All right, then Scott Formby asks, how does a designer find best contact at magazines? What type of file photo are expected? Pamela, maybe you answer that question. Uh, you know, go, go through the masthead for us online. If you go to luxsource.com and I think it's in the about us section, we have every editor listed with their email. Um, you can also hire a publicist and they really know, um, the ins and outs. And we have a great relationships. No, not only with Elizabeth Blitzer, but with so many publicists. So they, they have a hire a publicist because they know exactly how to direct um, <laughs> your work through. And if I'm a new designer, um, I don't have a publicist. You basically say, do your homework and give it a shot. Just like contact one of some of your uh, editors. Yes. Yeah, so, you know, I, I think I'm old school. I think an email, some people DM, um, I always think, you know, be a little more proper, go through an email. Um, you know, if you can meet up with the editor, have a coffee. I know now that's not the time. Maybe you could do a virtual zoom with them and we're always interested in, in seeing um, what's out there, make sure that your work matches with what the magazine is looking for. Um, and uh, sure, it could just be, hey, I want you to, you know, I'd love to get your feedback on my work. I'll yeah. also say too, most magazines, that is very generous that you have put everybody's, edit, all your editors um, emails up because it's usually very hard to find that. And I often get this question asked. Um, I think that you can, you know, contact people on Instagram now, if you are, if you really want, there are some people who are more active and engage in that way. Um, so it is in a way an equalizer. I think, you know, while I heavily um, encourage people to hire publicists, I also think editors love discovering new talent on, on their own and in a very natural and, you know, to use an overly used word, organic way. And so I think there is a place for everybody to, um, find their own way. Um, and I will say also that most magazines do, and you can find this, have an info at or submissions at. And my experience is, because I've talked to a lot of magazines about this, that they actually really do go through all those projects because you never know. Um, oftentimes, like, you know, I guess in, in better days when there's an excess of staff or you, there's an office, somebody's printing those out and handing them to people. And it might take, you might not hear from people for, you know, three months, but, you know, there are ways to get to editors on your own. And, um, and you can, I do trust that they will get to your project if it's being submitted in a way that they are telling you on the website that they are receiving. Mm -hmm. I also think, you know, also a couple of questions came up and 
um, summarizing that I also think, you know, you need to do your homework before you do that, right? You'd never have a second chance to leave a first impression. And, you know, ask also, you know, uh, other interior designers around you what they think about your photos and where to go. I think the more homework you do, I hope that I speak, you know, Pamela and Elizabeth and James also, you know, for you. But like, I would suggest that, you know, because you want to do it right. You would, you know, it, it needs to be, the quality needs to be there, you know. Um, so I have another question from um, Kate Ferguson. If I don't have the budget to hire a PR firm, what are the best practices for reaching out to public to publications? Is it wrong to send more than one project at once? So I think we discussed the first part, but would you would you send two projects? Would you like well, how would you do that, Elizabeth? Maybe you answer that question. Well, real, I would real quick never, because we have so many I would left. never send, and actually, I have not to my stomach even thinking about that. I would never send the same project to two people at a time. Um, because I think that just, you know, we, we all have, we, we have a trust circle and, you know, you really, it's just not the way you do it. And I know better. Um, I'm sure there are people that do it and they don't know better. So, you know, I understand that, you know, that's part of like, you know, our, what we understand and know. Um, I would never do that. I, I do believe that if my client has a strong, you never know what somebody's going to say yes or no to. So I, I feel like you owe it to them to start at wherever place they want to start and at least give it a go. Because, you know, one thing about having a good relationship with the editors, and I think, you know, this could be a publicist thing, but, or if you know somebody well enough, is that they will tell you no, and no is as good an answer as yes, and you just kind of move on, and so you have your, you have your list, and you know, if you want to start here, and then go here, and here, and here, and you may not get it published Got while it. you're here, but it'll end up in the right place, but you know, there have been times when I've had a client say, I really, this is my life's goal, and this is my best project, and you know, I'm retiring next year and I'd like it to go and like and I say that'll never they'll never take that and then sometimes I'll take it and then sometimes I'll have looking at a project that I think like you know my 20 years of advice tells me that this is a no-brainer for this magazine and they say no so it's like you know sometimes it is that they're looking they they need a regional pub they need something regionally um they already have three projects in um from Houston they already have this so you don't really there sometimes yeah you don't know why somebody says yes or no. Um, I don't um, think you answer the question. So, yeah, yeah, no, no, no you, you totally, you totally did. I'm just also looking at the time that is running. It's, it's the time is our enemy. You know, that's the problem. <laughs> um, uh, I, you know, uh, James, um, somebody, you know, uh, an anonymous attendee, you know, called us out by uh, talking about the photographer, but not giving, not giving out a range for a photographer. And I think it's difficult, obviously, because you can have your college friend until you know a top photographer but can you guys give a range like what what do you think like five hundred dollars feel fishy you know that's probably your college photographer and you should spend between two and five thousand a day is that a range that feels right like what do you think um it's it's expensive in that sense um i've I've worked with some great photographers and they range anywhere between you know two and five thousand a day um, and some of those days, um, a, a day is just a day, you know, and that, that may be nine to five or it may just be, you know, afternoon proper. Um, it, it is expensive, but you are also paying for the, um, the, not just the time there on the shoot, what's going to make you look absolutely better is, is that time when they are, you know, maybe you didn't notice that crooked lampshade in the background or whatever it is and they are working behind the scenes so I, I would I would say at least a couple thousand dollars a, a day um, for a photographer and it definitely goes definitely goes up um, goes up from there I hate to quote mm -hmm. if it's like another designer quoting my hourly rate and um, but you just ask them shoot them an email yeah helpful um, Pamela um, if you post pictures on your own website as an interior designer does that prevent you from submitting those some some of those photos to magazines to be published is that like like it's like website equals instagram or is that a different thing no it doesn't necessarily i wouldn't say it necessarily prevents we prefer that it's not every picture we understand that you know a lot of designers are just you know they, they want a way to promote themselves 
So we, we do look if we're, if we're going to, you know, green light a project. Sometimes we will ask our editors to have a conversation of, you know, if we're not reshooting, if it's the same images, sometimes there, there are scouting shots and we're taking our images and then we're okay with that. But obviously we want to give our readers an exclusive look at the project. So we'll have conversations in which we ask, you know, can you take it down or how long has this been up here? But more often than not for us, it's something that's, you know, it's new, it hasn't been on their site. And so we're able to have a conversation and work those details out. Mm -hmm. um, then somebody asks, you know, like, let's do two, three more questions super quick, you know, but because I try to fit as many into this hour as I can. Mm -hmm. Is it feasible to pitch a kitchen that has been photographed professionally if the rest of the house is not complete? For, for us, it's fine. We have a huge kitchen and bath section in every single issue. And I think there's a lot of, um, you know, magazines that are looking for that. Sometimes the Wall Street Journal, who does great, I mean, off duty, they do fantastic articles. I'm a big reader of, of that section. Um, so sure, Elizabeth, you could probably speak to this better than I could. Well, I, honestly, it is, we love, you ha do amazing like kitchen and bath features. And it is like, so, so it, because it's such an important room, I think for homeowners, but it doesn't get the attention that it deserves. And because so many times people will do a kitchen or bath makeover and it's almost more grand or you know better than the rest of the house it's an awesome feature that lux does and we we submit things all the time for that and it's not that's not a very common um um not a lot of magazines do that so it's a great thing and i would definitely take it to lux and but wall street journal off duty you're right they do a lot of um more and more there's more content where you can do a one-off room of some kind and a lot of times, like if we say, if we don't get great use of a project, we'll start piecing, picking it apart and might send, you know, locks the bathroom and kitchen and might hold some things um, for the right thing to come up for um, Wall Street Journal off duty. So. Uh-huh. Um, last question, James, that probably goes mostly to you. You know, Elizabeth Drake asks, is there any advice for art directing a stylist to be sure they don't change the designed look of the room? You know, because you say like, you know, you do your own cheeseburger and you love your own cheeseburger, yeah. but at the same time you hate your own cheeseburger. So like, how do you deal with that, that somebody's taking yours and, you know, adding something to that, although you want it, but you don't? I think that's the question. There's, there's the trust factor for sure that you are engaged in um, if you have a stylist working, but the, um, the sacrosanct part of it that I always go back to is that I did my work. I did, I did this and I'm proud of it. And I'm at this point where a stylist and a photographer are here. Let me trust them to do their job. And um, really it's one of those things is that old expression yesterday is heavy. Just let it go. Just let it go. Let the stylist do their work. I don't follow my plumber around or electrician around, let them do their work. <laughs> and then they will really, they really will do a great job. Now, if you get in there and they're saying, well, we need to move this table, move this sofa and this, then, then what, what are you actually doing? You're defeating the purpose. Were you, were you shooting this room? Or are they trying to create a whole new vignette that wasn't, that wasn't there? So that's when I would, I would have a little bit of a, of a little tete to tete to say, okay, what are, what are, what's our goal here? Is it to shoot this fireplace or is it to knock out this wall? And um, that trust factor with a professional you're going to, you're going to be there and, and be engaged. And I think the most ultimate um, compliment is when a stylist comes in and they just plop the pillow right where it goes because you've done, you've done the work and their work's done uh, for them. Great collaborations. Thank you. Um, I still have a lot of questions in here, but we don't have the time, but I've been screening through a lot of them and I think, most of them uh, we answered you know, earlier in this, this call. So for everybody who has joined later, we also recording this and we also going to make this available on YouTube. Um, you can either search through your, your, your YouTube. I also have a YouTube link on my Instagram bio. Um, so you're gonna find it like that. Um, also, you're gonna you know, find any one of us on Instagram you know, for, for any more questions. Um, and, um, yeah, I could not thank you, Pamela, you, Elizabeth, and you, James, more for joining today. 
and everybody else who's been listening to us for an hour. Uh, thank you very much for joining today. And um, yeah, I would say see you guys soon. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Bye.